Alright, good morning ladies and gentlemen once again from the flight deck. Captain Nabs here with you once again. And uh, we are here for another leg of a pilot's life. Again, it's been longer than I intended, so uh, unfortunately that's just sort of the way it happens sometimes. Just checking my audio really quickly there, and it all seems to work. So, uh, yeah, we are back. Welcome back to Chicago O'Hare. For those of you that don't recognize that distinctive control tower in the background, that is Chicago O'Hare back there. And uh, we are still in the Aerosoft CRJ for another leg here. And, of course, welcome back to me as well. Uh, wow, that sunshine's really kind of catching my face right there. It's just kind of just shining in there. Uh, make it a little bit almost too bright. I might have to pull those blinds down in a minute, but then it makes it almost too dark in here. So it's kind of nice to have that little bit of the sunshine there. Uh, yeah, so welcome back everybody to the stream. Uh, it's been uh, it, it, I, I realize it's been very sporadic this last um, this last few weeks. Uh, it's just been it's just summer. Uh, kids are on vacation and uh, just trying to you know sort of find things to do with them all the time and, and keep them entertained and. So, uh, I, you know, we've been going out a fair bit and, and, and we've had a couple of weeks of vacation. So uh, that's basically the reason why the streaming has been sort of intermittent at best for the last few weeks. Um, I, I think that's going to sort of shift a little bit now. I really don't know how August is going to play out because I don't have a schedule for August yet. But I think it's going to go back to being a little bit more... Red, not regimented, but a little bit more predictable, perhaps. Um, and uh, the schedule will hopefully become a little bit more regular because I am going to be going back to work this coming week, finally, at long last. It's been way too long uh, out of the flight deck, and I really need to get back into the flight deck for sure. I've actually been using this for just to sort of get used to being in the airplane again and getting used to certainly talking on the radio. Um, it's a skill, all the flying skills... Um, deteriorate pretty quickly if you don't use them like anything else. If you don't use it, they're going to deteriorate really quickly. So I have been trying to sort of get into the sim a little bit and uh, it, it just sort of get back up to speed. I don't fly the CRJ, so that's sort of, that's not the point. The point is more just getting used to IFR operations, doing briefings, reading charts, flight plans, and um, uh, talking on the radio, that sort of thing. So I've been doing that a lot the last few days. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're going to continue with this uh, today and like I said hopefully with this schedule becoming a little bit more predictable in August I think we'll probably find a l the streaming will become a little bit more predictable it won't necessarily always be on weekends but it should hopefully not go three weeks between a stream then a bla then a one stream and then two more weeks good morning squibbly welcome uh, I'm parked at Gate Hotel 6 if you're ready to boot up wherever it is that you're planning on joining us from here um, yeah today's flight uh, today's uh, flights are really quite short and sweet. So today, uh, if I pull it up here, we are going from Chicago O'Hare up to Milwaukee. And then we're going to turn around and we're going to come right back. The life of a regional pilot, just short flights all the time. Um, you're over at G12, well I'm sure I'll spot you soon enough. Um, yeah, this is this is the life of regional pilots, is, is often is short legs. It's not always short legs, but it's often a lot of legs in a day. If you get a three-hour leg, that's a long leg for a regional pilot. Um, generally, you're talking like 30-minute to two-hour legs are really where the regional pilots tend to live most of the time. The, the, the senior ones might bid for some high-credit high, high credit pairings, you know, a Dallas turn or something like that, uh, some, or Denver or something a little farther out. But most of them will be, bo will be banished to flying these really short routes, and you'll do sometimes five or six legs in a day. And it's just exhausting because you did these short legs you get no time to relax you get no time to, to really do anything by the time you you're you're even halfway to cruise you're already planning your descent and your approach and landing which is going to be the case today like i i, I don't know ex i've never done this flight in real life before but i know it's short i know it's going to be ridiculous this might be one of the shortest flights i've ever done in the crj um certainly since i started flying here in microsoft flight simulator so it's going to be a busy busy couple of legs 40 minutes flight but that's i think gate to gate like it's I, I don't think it's 40 minutes in the air i have my flight plan up here somewhere um the air time is indicated as 16 minutes yeah <laughs> no you're right and the flight time it is correct it's 40 minutes it's more time taxiing than it is on the ground uh, so we're going to hop in and get started in just a minute, but before we do that, uh, I just want to show you guys one more thing, and we talked about this last stream. So I looked into it, and uh, especially some of you guys that uh, I know very well have uh, con did, did convince me. Um, so we, what we have right here is something called self-loading cargo, and we talked about this on the last stream. Um, 
for those of you that don't know what self-loading cargo is, it's a app that basically simulates the passengers and crew inside your aircraft. Um, gives you a rating based on how well your passengers think you did. Uh, you can monitor monitor all the cabin services being provided and uh, and that sort of thing. So um, it 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 really is kind of fun. It's it's I, I've tried Pack X before and I really didn't like Pack X all that much. I don't know if I'm going to stick with self-loading cargo, but it definitely is, was worth a try, I thought. Um, give you guys a little a look, see what it looks like. Um, and, uh, yeah, basically it's going to simulate our flight for us. And it, it, what I did find, I've done it a few, a few flights now, what I did find is that it did add an ambience to the to the airplane. Uh, just just the noise of some passengers, the awareness that there's cabin crew back there, in a way that was perhaps more interactive than the default CRJ uh, allowed. So, uh, and fortunately, in order to run it, one thing you need to do is you need to run FSU IPC. So here it comes. As soon as you run FSU IPC, then it works. Uh, give it a second here for it to just connect to the sim and figure out what it's doing. There it is. Uh, all right, so it's already figured out our aircraft, and uh, I had it set to my Air Canada one. Uh, I guess we'll go with American Airlines now. Uh, and what we can do is we can go under Advanced Settings, and because I've already defined everything in my SimBrief flight plan. I can literally just import everything from SimBrief and it'll tell you everything. Uh, I don't like this departure time. I was planning on more like 14.15 and then a 40 minute flight would put this at 14.55. Uh, because it will it will monitor your departure time and your arrival time and if you are not on time it will complain. You will lose. The passengers will be unhappy. So uh, there we go. Start flight. And then we actually have to boot up the airplane before it'll let us do anything. So it'll give us little prompts throughout the throughout the flight. I can leave that right there, and you guys can can see that. Uh, so we're gonna hop in the flight deck and get this show on the road because I do want to get two legs done today. If I can, we're gonna do our best. I think we're gonna make it because um, they're like I said, they're short legs. So uh, give me one moment here. Let's hop. Let's put on the track IR. All right. Uh, okay, so, uh, Squibbly, yeah, you had uh, issues with 9, center 9, right, last time. Uh, okay, I mean, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, 9, center, because this is the FS Dream Team Chicago. This is kind of, it's kind of nice because this is based on the master plan of the airport, so this is actually farther ahead than the real world airport is. The real world airport, the runway changes are not complete yet, they're still in progress, but FS Dream Team took the master plan and basically fast forwarded and modeled their Chicago O'Hare based on what the airport's going to look like uh, in another two or three years. I don't know exactly what the target end date is for all this construction, but uh, they've got all the new runways in there and all the old runways kind of shut down. So uh, I'm going to go with, with 9 Center just because it's going to be realistic, but I'm sure we'll, uh, sure we'll be uh, pretty close together anyways. Uh, yeah, so let's hop in the flight deck unpause my track IR and there we go reset it I just was looking at the tablet there uh, and get this show on the road so self-loading cargo doesn't want to do anything until we get this show on the road uh, I'm not gonna put the bridge on just yet but uh, what we are gonna do is do a quick overhead check so I feel like this track IR sensor is not quite in the right place here All right. Anywho, um, so we're gonna look. We're gonna make sure that the electrics are all off. See if I, I think the other problem is my sunshine is really kind of messing with it too. It's getting spurious reflections because of the sunshine. Uh, so we'll make sure that our hydraulic pumps are all off. Yeah, I think I'm gonna need to give me one second. I think I'm gonna have to close those blinds because I think that's what's causing a couple of extra reflections on my hat here. It's a bit unfortunate because it's a little bit darker now, and I kind of like the sunlight. It's nice, but it, it's making it hard for the track hire to do to do its work. So, uh, hydraulic pumps are off. Landing gear lever is down. Uh, the spoilers are off. Disconnects are in. Thrust levers are off. The flaps are up, and the ADG is not being deployed. The alternate flap is normal. So we can go ahead and flick on that battery master. All right, and. What we need as well is, of course, some ground power, which we can connect now. We've got the door already open. We might just open the cargo doors here 
And the other thing I want to just check and see is how much fuel do we need. Oh, we need very little fuel for this. <laughs> uh, hold on. Uh, yeah, we don't need much fuel at all for this because it's such a short flight. Okay. Um, so now we've got the power. That'll bring everything up. Put on the nav light. Test the emergency lights. So put them on first for a second. Should see emergency lights on, and then we can put them back to arm. And of course, we do need to get our IRSs aligning. I love to fly with armrests, and I hate putting armrests up when I'm in the airplane, but in order to see things in the sim, I have to do that. Okay. Uh, so now self-loading cargo does a lot of stuff sort of on its own. The cabin crew sort of has their own independent mind. I do have to tell them when we're ready for boarding. The one thing over here, this little symbol here indicates that the door is not open. Uh, unfortunately, because of the way Microsoft Flight Simulator is designed, is this is not quite uh, correct. So self-loading cargo is designed more for the FSX P3D era. Um, and because the doors are not very well programmed yet in MSFS, the only way to get this to work in MSFS right now is to attach the jet bridge. So if I can move my jet bridge into position there, when the jet bridge comes into position, you'll see it kind of automatically opens the door, and that's the signal to self-loading cargo to open the doors that the jet bridge is attached, and when you disconnect it, the doors close automatically because, there it is, and you get a lot of ambient noise at the gate, which really, uh, it's probably much too loud for a stream. That's one thing I've noticed about it is that it's quite loud, so uh, it's nice because it adds a lot of um, I'm going to turn the boarding music way down here as well. annoying, sorry. <laughs> Worst finger gaming. Hey, uh, welcome to the stream. Alright, sorry about that, guys. I have been playing with this a little bit, but I haven't used it a whole lot, so one thing I have found is that a lot of the default volume settings were extremely loud, so I've turned everything that way down, but I couldn't seem to turn the music down. I couldn't seem to control that, so I've just killed that altogether. Um, but a lot of this stuff can be automated, so in the settings menu, you can automate pretty much everything. Um, you can automate boarding music, you can automate when they serve drinks and everything else, or you can use these buttons to do it yourself to manage it. So you can basically become the lead flight attendant and manage the cabin yourself if you want. So one thing I do need to do at some point is just make a PA to the cabin crew and tell them that we're ready. Cabin crew, we're ready to get going now, so as soon as you're ready, you can open the doors and start letting the passengers on board. And then you. you can see already right there, a few passengers on board, so the people start boarding that way. Uh, we've got the load sheets on board. And, uh, so Here's a, here's a quick board, map as well, please, uh, just to show you what it looks like. So here are the people and, getting uh, into the airplane. We've got a couple no of... Problem. These are cabin okay, crew in great. blue. We're all mixed on. And then you'll see a few passengers starting to board here, so they're already seated, and you'll see them kind of come through the door and board that way. So it's, it's, it has sort of a background simulation. All the passengers are sort of independent. Each one has their own thoughts and needs, and, uh, and the cabin crew is sort of all independent as well. They all sort of walk around try to get the jobs done, so it's all sort of a little, little bit of AI happening in the background. Uh, so I'm just going to keep that over there and what we'll do is we'll get our airplane set up so of course the first thing we've got to do is hop into the FMS and get this going fortunately it's a short flight so it shouldn't take too long I do have the correct up-to-date database 15th of July to the 21st of August so that's all good and we'll set our position from the GPS and into the flight plan we'll do this really quickly here hopefully KORD I'm not going to hold out a lot of hope either today about ATC. That's one thing I'll say. I'm not expecting too much in the way of ATC today, unfortunately. Um, just just well, not what I'm expecting at the end of the day. Uh, alternate is to come back here. It's a, it's a morning. You never know. We might get a few things. It's a weekend morning, so we may get some ATC. But as of right now, I don't believe. We got Indian KC. That does not help us. We need Chicago Center. Uh, all right, and the flight today is... Sky West 211 Foxtrot. I'm not sure why it's a Foxtrot. It could have been an extra session or some section or something running, but that's what was actually in the in my schedule as 211 Foxtrot. So that's what it is. Departure today on the O'Hare 8, and let's see. Swiftly, you had the weather up here. I'm just looking at it here. 
Uh, Milwaukee, there's Chicago. You wrote a lot of stuff, and I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> 3022 on the meter. Maybe I can set that too while we're just down here. 3022. Yeah, stop. There it is. 3022. And yeah, the winds are out of the northeast. So yeah, so I'm going to go with uh, 9 center for departure. Um, because that's probably the most realistic thing that would happen for a northbound flight. Uh, and then we go to the next page, and it's a really simple flight plan. Uh, it's got three waypoints in it. Rainer, Bartman, and Bartman, and Taze. And this looks very familiar to me, and the reason why it does is because I've been to Chicago many times, and about half the time when you go to Chicago, if the weather's good, Milwaukee is your alternate. So for some reason, this flight plan here to Milwaukee seems very familiar. I programmed it in as my alternate route many times. I've never actually been to Milwaukee, but I've programmed it in many times. All right, and uh, Milwaukee uh, winds are out of the east. I really, honestly, don't know what to expect in Milwaukee. I've never been to Milwaukee, so arrivals. We're not going to do the arrival. Uh, we have ones and sevens. Uh, I'm just going to pull up my Navigraph charts. I can get this to work. Oh, I can't get this to work again. I, I got this to work the other day. Oh, we got to work today. Okay. I got it to work one day, and then I didn't get to work the next day, and it's very sort of intermittent. But um, if I make this window a little bit wider here. But one thing I do like about this is that it's built into the sim. It's basically the same as the website. Um, but what I do like about it is then it's easier for you guys to see it here. So There we go. Uh, so now we can go to Milwaukee because I just want to just see what the airport looks like. Are the runways all pretty long here? Uh, they're all pretty long, I would imagine. It doesn't really matter too much, I would think. So I guess one left where will be is just as good as anything else if the winds are out of 0107. Yeah, so I'm going to I'm gonna guess one left. Self-loading cargo without immersion to DC-6. Um, where's Finger Gaming? I think they do have a DC-6 model built in. I can't show you now because I, I don't have the... Because uh, it's, it's already started, but I believe there is a DC-6, so I believe you could do it. Um, it would... You have to take it with a little bit of a grain of salt, only because um, uh, it's designed sort of around a modern airliner. So if you were to use it with the DC-6, it wouldn't be necessarily that... Um, what am I trying to say? It wouldn't be like that up, like like it would be very modern, like you'd hear like you'd hear um, like a fairly modern thing. But actually, what you can do though um, is that with self-loading cargo, there are custom sound packs. That's what you saw at the beginning where it said Air Canada, and then I switched to American Airlines. There's custom sound packs, so you can change it to the sounds, uh, the interactions with the cabin crew to resemble what you, the airline you fly with. Um, so. Uh, there, there probably is a good sound pack for the DC-6. Like, the default ones sound like modern airliners with, with you know, uh, in-flight entertainment systems and all that other stuff, but uh, you might be able to get one that works with the DC-6. I'm, I'm sure technically it can work with the DC-6. Um, uh, I, I believe I saw some people had created, like, a cabin layout for the DC-6, so I'm pretty sure it's in there, so uh, definitely worth a try. All right, so that's our whole flight plan in there. Let's just check the legs here, Rainer, Department Taze, and then we have a discon before we basically just start the approach there, which is fine. Yeah, you need an old... Uh, you go look. Um, go to the self-loading cargo website, and then at the very top there's a link to their Discord. And in their Discord they have uh, a sound pack channel where people just post sound packs. Uh, there's also on flightsim.to is uh, a bunch of custom sound packs. So you may find what you're looking for in there. I don't know. Um, but go look into it. You can definitely look into it without having bought it. You'll see how this, how this functions, and you can go see if they have the, uh, the sound packs and the aircraft layouts you're looking for before you download it. Uh, okay, so... Before I get too distracted here, because this is going to be fast. I'm not going to have a whole lot of time to chat today, guys. Cause <laughs> okay, because uh, we're trying to get this whole thing done here. So, uh, just looking at my flight plan here, and we're supposed to have 69 people on here. So let's also... Alright, so let's set the payload in the simulator. Let's copy it to our FMS. And we have way more fuel than we need. Uh, so let's... 6600. Uh, yeah. 
so let's see if that should have defueled us to 6,600. You wouldn't normally get in an airplane to have 11 tons. The airlines never fuel the airplane until they know how much they need for the next leg. So I've defueled us a little bit and said that, yeah, we showed up with, a lot, with not too much fuel, and then they fueled us to an appropriate amount, 6,600. The default in this airplane is about 9,000. It's a little bit high, so... Uh, let's see here. Uh, so, yeah, we've got that. Uh, our cruise altitude today is probably not going to be very high. It says 9 or 1,000, so we're never even going to get above 10. It's not going to be a very happy cabin because they're not even probably going to get a drink service today. It's just that. It's just that fast. It's... Uh, just trying to see. Uh, alternate route. Flight level 180. I don't think we need to go to 180, but okay, fine. It's programmed back a very long route that we would never go that far. Uh, plus 11 for the ambient temperature, and 92 at 9 for the wind. You can set the departure time if you want of, uh, what is it, 14.15 here. Now set up, and the only thing I change is this to 0.77. Execute that, and performance. I also want to have a flex temp in here because we got long runways here. We don't need that. 46 degrees. All right, and then I believe we got everything set up there in the FMS. Let's go ahead and pan through the overhead panel, make sure everything's good here. This is closed. I wonder if this actually opens. I don't see any flex spots. Because in the Dash 8, this overhead panel, and the Majestic Dash 8, they actually you could open this panel. All right, uh, so battery matches on, electrics all look good, fire detection monitor, we got three reds and three greens, uh, hydraulic shutoffs are in, we just got the nav lights on, no other lights need to be on, fuel pumps are off, cross flow is, man is auto, uh, bleeds are normal auto, close to both, and uh, let's see, we've got our fuel already, so we can go ahead and get ready to fire this up. What did I do here? How did I get that onto... Did I click something? Um, what happened to my MFD and how do I get my MFD back? <laughs> I must have clicked something. There it is. Norm. There it is. I must have clicked something by mistake. I didn't even realize I did it. Alright. Um, APU door is open. We can go ahead and start the APU. Engine switches switch are all out. Uh, hydraulic pumps. We'll get the one, three, B, and two on, and check their pressures. First flight of the day, so we got to make sure we check everything. Yep, they're all good. Back to auto, on, and auto. And those systems are losing their pressure, but number three is holding. Good. All right. Um, no idea what the field elevation is in Milwaukee, but uh, it's right here still. Find it. 728. Helpful to have the Navigraph charts on screen. Uh, one thing I'm going to have to do, see what I'm doing is this. So 728, so we're looking for 740. There it is. Nice. Alright. Uh, packs can go on. Research van can go on. And the windshields can start heating up. Uh, no smoking should be on. And seatbelts, we've got our fuel already, right? 6,600. If we're starting the APU, we should have the fuel. So there we go. Uh, all right. And 3,022 on the meter. So let's get that set. Three zero two two. We got our speeds already set. We would have done them here, but uh, we just did them early because it's just easier. Cockpit voice recorder. Tests. Alright, let's get the takeoff bars up. And altitude. Five. That's 5,000 on the money. Yep. All right, and then heading. I want to say 091, just off the top of my head. But 
let's just check it out here. Okay, close you down, back to Chicago. And, uh, let's see here, taxi. 093, actually. There we go. Kind of like having this up here, though. It's kind of handy to have. Alright, um... So now our guidance panel is set 5,091, and speed is set to 148. V2 plus 10, the altimeter is set. Check the anti skid. Check it all. Use a over Hold that. That is a fail message. Yep, hold that. Lamp test. Works. That's one. All right, those are in. That's disarmed. That's auto. Boilers are stowed. Thrust levers are at fuel off. Flaps up. We're on Unicom. Uh, TCAS. We just need to change it to relative. And ATC 2000 standby. Fab trim, mock trim, yaw dampers all on. Everything else is at our 12 o'clock, and a quick trim test here. And what we'll do is we'll again green out just so we can touch the button. Close, and... There we go. All right. And uh, I believe that's all done, so we can go ahead into our uh, departure briefing. Where's the orange blinking light coming from? It's coming from the GPU. Uh, the truck there has... Uh, the GPU truck has an orange beacon on there, that's where the orange flashing light comes from. Uh, I guess we could also ask these guys here, while I'm thinking about it. Hey guys, why don't you load the bags in there? He's going to drive right through the airplane, but anyways. <laughs> okay, um, where was I? Yeah, okay, so we're going to do briefing. Uh, so, if any of any abnormality or other problem during taxi, we'll stop. This will be a lessee takeoff. Any malfunctions prior to the V1 of 127, I'll stop. Call stop or go. If the call is stop, I will close the thrust levers. Apply maximum brake. There is no auto throttle. Apply maximum reverse and stop on the runway. I'll set the parking brake. PA remains either remains even. Call for any required memory items. Security checklist. Uh, You'll verify reverse monitor deceleration, call through 60 knots, and advise ATC, Mayday, 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 SkyWest 211, Foxtrot, uh, stop pick on the runway. If the call is go or we're out above V1, we'll continue to take off at 400 feet. I will call heading mode uh, and ask you to identify the failure. Heading mode bank and ask you to identify the failure. The uh, engine failure procedure off of runway uh, 10 center in Chicago. I don't have one printed, but it's, we're just going to say it's runway heading. And the uh, MSA around here is 3600, so we'll go up to at least 3600 before we make any turns. Uh, once we're established in the climb, we'll retract the flaps of schedule and actually cure it and uh, call for any required memory items or cure a checklist. Do you have any questions? All right, so now we'll do the normal departure briefing. So we are here on, uh, I believe we're right about here. We're here or here? I think we're here on this hotel concourse here. So we're going to go out Alpha 14 to get to 10 Center. Uh, we're going to probably go... I don't even know how they're going to do it in the future here. I'm going to go... Uh, let's see here. I'm going to say Alpha 7. We're going to cut over to Tango Hotel to Fox Fox. And I believe Fox Fox is going to be the uh, normal departure point for 10 Center unless you need the full length because uh, there's still like about 9,000 feet remaining and then that lets you cross. That lets the ATC cross all the runways behind you. So they, they like to do that here. They like to do intersection departures as a default. So uh, we're going to plan from Fox Fox. Uh, the departure is the O'Hare 5 departure. O'Hare 6 departure actually now. It's uh, still very straightforward. Vector only SID 20 3, effective the 5th of October of 2020. Speed restriction all turbo jets in all directions maintain 250 knots till advised by ATC. What well, we can't go above 250 knots because we're never going above 10,000, so that's fine. Radar is required, use frequency depicted within the sector, so we'd be departing north. Uh, we're doing Rainer is our first fix, so we'd be departing uh, in the 250 if we had departure control. Uh, 
Specifically, initial climb all aircraft, expect radar vectors to first on route navigator fix, and expect the clearance to request altitude flight level 10 minutes at departure, 5,000 is the altitude. All aircraft cross the 5.5 GCO arc at or above 3,000, cross the 8.5 GCO arc at or above 4,000, maintain 5,000. Uh, if unable to comply, advise ATC as soon as possible prior to departure. So, what we can do here, uh, no, I don't think I can do that in this one. Uh, but what we can do is we can put GCO in there. GCO is 108.25, so we're going to put that in. And then we'll have the DME readout. Ah, oh, it's already on 108.25. Ah, funny. Didn't even look. Uh, okay. Um... Okay, so, uh, I think that's about it. Uh, terrain is uh, 3,600 feet, the highest MSA around Chicago. Weather is a beautiful day out there, beautiful. Light winds, no issues there. Operational, no MELs on the aircraft, no TAMs are ridiculous at the Chicago O'Hare Airport. Uh, but we do have to check them before we depart for safety's sake, so here they are. Uh, all like 25 pages. So let me know if you see anything that's going to affect us here. I don't see anything. I suppose it's a regular, regular surface, a regular surface. I don't care about a regular surface. I just want to know what's closed. Uh, Orchard pad, Charlie, Charlie, t -t 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 kilo uniform. No, 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 I don't see anything there. Uh, let's see here. Ten center safety area, regular. Ten center safety area, regular. It's fine. Approach. Don't care about right now. And no sits. Okay, so we're good. So no tams will not affect us. Uh, and then that's about it. Noise abatement is uh, not existent at this airport. We just do what we're told, turn when we're told. Uh, any questions? All right, I see you guys have been chatting a whole bunch here. Um, oh, do we have ATC? You said we have uh, ATIS info. Oh, that's just the actual real world ATIS. Nice. <laughs> nice, I like it. Uh, nine Center from Fox Fox. Thank you. Perfect. 9,200 feet remain. There you go. I can't find the button in the Twitch window where I can reset the playback speed from one I... That I don't know. I don't know too much about Twitch, honestly. Um, finally a CRJ streamer. Uh, yeah, so this is the CRJ. This is the CRJ. So it, this is an add-on airplane. Um, it's much higher quality than the default airplanes. Microsoft Flight Simulator is not bad. Um, the scenery looks really quite good. That being said, this airport is add-on scenery because it's Chicago O'Hare and I want a nice, really good, high-quality model of Chicago O'Hare, and this is an add-on airplane, so... Um, I think Microsoft Flight Simulator is worth the money. Uh, definitely the, base pa the basic package, anyways, is definitely worth the money, and then there's plenty of add-ons to go with it, so... But that's just me. I think you probably could have figured that out by the fact that I'm streaming it, so... Anyways, uh, how are we doing here time-wise? Okay, it's just about time to get out of here, but we're within our 10-minute window for departure. I never did a before-start checklist, so let's get the before-start checklist out of the way first. Uh, before-start check, passenger signs are on. Uh, landing elevation, 740 is set. Altimeters, we've got uh, 3022 set checked. Uh, FMS, uh, both checked and set. I'm just going to go ahead and put the lights page up here on the side as well for now. Uh... IRS is aligned, it is in nav mode, and uh, radios and nav aids 228000, it's all set, takeoff briefing is complete before start checklist is complete. Alright, so with that said, I think we're just about ready to go here, let's just make sure the APU is on, this is not in use, so we can go ahead and disconnect the ground power. We can probably close those doors, because I imagine these guys are done loading, yeah, they're back where they started from, and uh... I think that's about it. So what we could do... Flight deck to ground. Go ahead, flight deck. We will be ready in a minute. Roger. And what that does now with FS2 crew, when you trigger that, that will... That Roger. Statement will call the tug. Hi, Captain. Uh, All what the tug's doing. Trying to align with us. And that also retracts the bridge automatically when the tug uh, gets called. And um, what that also does then for the self-loading cargo is as soon as the bridge retracts, then it says that the door is closed. And uh, if they start doing their cabin announcements, I turn the volume down on the cabin announcements so you may not hear them. Now, if, uh, this Pushback Express was doing that to me, doing this to me yesterday. They were being a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, and it kept on not quite triggering correctly. So let's see if we can bring it up. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. 
and on okay, behalf yep, of myself, the first officer, and the cabin crew, I'd just like to give you a warm welcome on board right. the aircraft. As you may have noticed, we've now closed the, the doors and expect to be departed in just a few moments. moments. It just kind of adds a little bit of action to our cabin crew. I kind of like it. We most appreciate it. If you require any assistance from the cabin crew, please press the button above your head and be sure to listen to the safety briefing that we'll be playing in a few moments. You'll hear from me again once we just lose our cheek, but for now, once again, welcome aboard and thank you for flying with us. Personal electronic devices are off. APU is um, APU is on. Uh, electrics are checked, and takeoff data is all set. Doors are oh, it would help if we close the door, I guess. And we'll take the chocks out as well. Captain, the cabin is secure. All passengers are aboard. Uh, let's see here. Doors are closed and locked. And the beacon's now on. Fuel pumps are on. Uh, quantity is still 6,600 pounds. That checks. Hydraulic pumps are all auto on. The parking brake is going to be released. And uh, in a moment, the transponder should go on. Clear to start checklist is complete. We are ready for pushback and engine start. Roger. Release the parking brakes, please. Brakes released. Brakes are released. And this is where I ran into trouble last time. The tug did not want it to attach properly. It seemed like it started to attach and then it detached. So I'm going to try something here. sort of give a little push to um, push back express because it generally has worked really well and suddenly it doesn't seem to want to work all that well. All right. Um, can you talk to ATC? You can, but it's just it, it's just through menus. It's not it's pointy and clicky, and the default system is not very good. If you really want to talk to ATC, you'll want to look into something called FADS. And <laughs> you like my you like my accent there, did you? I suddenly have a suddenly have a little bit of an Irish thing going on there. A little, a little British, anyways. Brakes released. Chocks are out, right? Nope, chocks went back in for some reason, that's why. Brakes released. Pushing back. There we go. Did you hear that? Did you hear the two beeps there? That was really subtle, but it's there. Yeah, see now... Uh... I like Pushback Express because it's got the voice interactivity, but when it stops working, it's just useless, so... Let's see if we can get this tug to connect this time. So I've also taken to using Pushback uh, Helper sometimes when it's not working for me. And sometimes Pushback Express wants to work, sometimes it doesn't, so... Gonna connect or what's up, buddy? All right, he's figuring it out slowly but surely. I, I like Pushback Express better when it works, but sometimes it's it last last little while. It's been a little bit finicky. And uh, no, we do not have reverse. Uh, we do have reverse thrust, but not that will maneuver the aircraft backwards, and I don't think they're going to want you to power back in a place like Chicago anyway, so... Just wait for him to finish connecting up there. It's taking way too long. Pasha's going to be annoyed soon. Now it helps if I take off the parking brake. There we go. Alright, we're cleared to start engine 2. We are? Oh, thank you. Starting engine two. Right. 
using the using the voice interaction is so much more realistic than trying to use the button interface, but sometimes you just you gotta get the flight going, right? Alright, please arm doors, thank you. Twenty percent. You can just say that that's my FO's accent. Alright, straight. And then we'll do stop and we'll do forward for a bit here. And stop. Just that's enough of that. It worked. It got us there. Um, I like the Pushback Express because it's interactive, so I find it's a little bit... The, the voice interaction adds so much to it, but... If it's not working, there's not much to do. Dude, hurry up. <laughs> Alright, uh, so that's number two is a good start, so we'll just do the quick fuel pump check. Uh, we have left, low pressure on the left side, but not on the right. And starting engine one. And actually what I should also do is just make sure this starts automatically when it's supposed to. Uh, but you'll see that this is the uh, self-loading cargo is kind of really just stepping through its steps on its own. It gives you instructions here on what sort of the next step is to sort of prompt you on what needs to happen next for the flight to be completed. Sometimes it's like, it's, it's obvious, obviously, like taxi to the runway and things like that are fairly obvious, but it's more for like when you need to open the doors and boarding and things like that, that it sort of gives you a, an idea of what of what the next step is, what you have to do to get the self-loading cargo working. So I kind of like it. It's very sort of self-explanatory, very intuitive uh, interface once you've read through, the, through it very briefly. Um, so these all sort of control what is happening in the cabin. These just sort of give you status updates. So uh, we're expected to arrive in 27 minutes. We got, uh, that's not right. Somehow that didn't update properly. Well, we're gonna be late then, I guess. Uh, it talks about the cabin crew and everything else. Uh, so it gives you all sorts of like little updates here of everything that's going on. All right, so there we go. We got a good start on number one as well. So we can go ahead and shut off the APU. I'm just gonna go ahead and kill the navgraph charts for now. I'll bring them back if I need them probes on, thrust reversers, flaps, and nose wheel steering, and after start checklist. After start checklist generators are auto, and uh, electrics are all checked. Bleed air is on auto, and packs are on. Yeah, packs are on. Uh, APU is going off. The uh, engine anti-ice is not required. And nose wheel steering is armed. Yes. All right, just waiting to see that the APU is shut down and the door is closed. Did I press the wrong button? I feel like I'm gonna press the wrong button. Well, not running now, that's for sure. I think I turned it off by mistake. All right, well, it definitely shut her down. All right, flight control check. Elevators, aileron. And the rudder. Alright, and with that we're ready to taxi. And let's just do a quick check of pilot's life to make sure it is tracking the flight. It does say over here in the corner it says end flight, which means that we currently are in flight, so it is tracking properly, so we're good to go. I never did set the parking brake when this guy dropped us off. Alright, well there we go. I've gotten very used to using Pushback Express, but the last couple times I've tried to use it, it's been a little bit glitchy like that, so I've, I've, I've run into some issues with it, so that's why I kind of, I download a Pushback Helper just as like a backup system to help me get me off the gates when Pushback Express fails me. Chicago Air Traffic, good morning. Uh, SkyWest, who 11 Foxtrot is uh, on the uh, Hotel Concourse taxiing for departure, runway 9 center. All right, and then there's all, sorts, there's all sorts of things that self-loading cargo will do, and it's monitoring you as a pilot as well, so it'll give you a grade as a pilot. It's also monitoring... Okay, Japanese, I want to tell you that taxi into runway 9 left by a Delta, Mike, Mike 2, Charlie, Zulu. Oh, yeah. Um... Yeah, so it's, it's, it's doing all sorts of other things, like it's monitoring your taxi speed, um, how fast you go around the turn. So if you're one of these people that taxis at 40 knots, 
and uh, and cranks around the turns at 40 knots, then you're going to get a poor poor performance. If you overbank and overpitch in, during your flight, your passengers will complain, and you'll get a low score. So, uh, it it's it's for me, it's more about the interactivity, hearing the pastures. You can't hear them too much right now because I turned them way down, um, but you hear them a little bit in the background. So pasture ambience, if I turn it way up, you'll be able to hear it in the background there. So you hear that, and it's kind of nice. It gets a little bit annoying when you're listening to it constantly, but it's kind of nice during the boarding and deboarding processes, so I like that. So, uh, But I'm going to turn it way back down because I don't want it to outdo me here. And there are safety announcements, so I'm going to turn them up so you can hear them as well. Just so you can kind of hear them as, a, as an example of what self-loading cargo is all about. And that's why I feel like it adds some interactivity just by having having the cabin crew, having to interact with the cabin crew a bit. I've, I've really enjoyed it. Don't forget to tell the back end to get in their seats. Yes, thank you, Tim. And that's kind of the that's kind of the neat thing. Like um, as I was just saying, like you, you interact with the cabin crew a bit. So here's the cabin crew. This is the cabin crew status page I'm on right now. That's like the normal notification page. This is the cabin crew status page. You can see the cabin is secured, so everybody's buckled in except for the crew is not seated. So that before you take off, you've got to tell the crew to take their seats, otherwise you get in trouble um, because they don't want to be standing during takeoff. So the only and the thing about being a cabin crew in an airplane is you never know where you are. It's it's the funniest thing. Like any, and as a pilot, you kind of almost have a hard time kind of understanding that sometimes because uh, you know you have these huge windows. You always know as a pilot exactly where you are, but as a cabin crew. You're standing up in this airplane. The windows are down at eye level when people are seated. So when you're standing up, all you can see you're looking out the windows and looking down is just a little bit of pavement. So you know you're on pavement somewhere, but you don't know where you are. You don't know how close the runway you are most of the time. Like you really have no sense of where you are. Uh, you know, when you land an airplane, if you've ever heard a cabin crew do the wrong announcement, don't laugh uh, because it could happen to any cabin crew. They're sitting in the back. They have the smallest window in the entire airplane next to them in this in this in the seats. Uh, they the only ones they usually have are the the, the ones that are built at the doors. Uh, I need Alpha Seven. That's what I'm looking for. Um, so that's Alpha Eight. Next one. Uh, so they have the smallest little windows in the airplane. They can't see much through them okay, at all. Traffic, man, seven, nine, one, total, the so you never right, know. Like, at Michael, uh, you definitely don't know. You definitely don't know which airport you're at when you're at flight ten by looking out the window because you can't see out the window very far. It's not a good window. It's a it's, it's a little bit of a fisheye lens. It distorts everything. It's very small can't really see much through it. So, uh, yeah, don't be surprised when, when cabin crew makes mistakes and announces at the wrong airport. I've had it. I've heard it many times. It's You do four flights in a day. You forget which flight you're on. You forget which airport you're going to. You can't see it out the window. You have no idea. So. Uh, worst finger gaming, I just read what you said about that you wouldn't hear anything because they'd all be staring at their seats. And you're absolutely right. 95% of people. It's n it's neat during the boarding process, though. I miss that about sort of the GSX boarding process is hearing just a little bit of sort of ambient noise. Because also when the flight tech door is closed and you put your headset on, you don't hear much about what's going on in the airplane. You really don't. So that's not the ambience that it adds. But when you're at the gate, the gate noise it adds is kind of nice. Because when you have this door open, when the outer door is open, you hear the passengers boarding, you hear other sounds on the gate. So, uh, yeah. You're, you're right, like, you, you won't hear too much actual noise in the airplane. And I find myself turning that down. I don't really want to hear that part so much. But it's the it's the boarding and deboarding. It kind of adds a little bit of just a, an atmosphere of, oh, there's people on the airplane. All right, let's do our taxi check. Really quick here. Uh, slats flap. We got eight set. Uh, flight controls are checked. Trims green, 7.5 units. Uh, thrust reversers are armed. Flight controls are... Sorry, flight instruments are checked, and the brake temps are checked. The taxi checklist is complete. So yeah, about one minute before we're ready to take off, we give the we give a PA to the cabin crew. Um, yeah, you can use VATSIM anytime you want. Um, if there's no ATC online, you won't talk to anybody, but, uh, y you know, you won't be talking to, like, the radar controllers as much, although in Europe a lot of, even the VFR flying is done under radar control, but um, definitely when you get to airports with a control tower, you'll want to talk to the control tower, so you'll want, I, you, you'll get a lot more interactivity out of flying on VATSIM. There won't always be a controller everywhere you want to fly all the time, because it's all volunteers, so it's only whenever somebody has time to be online, but I think you'll get a lot of use out of it. I think, uh, I certainly think it's a very worthwhile, uh, system. 
uh, even if one particular time, where are we were uniform, this is the new Julia we're turning on to here, and then we have Fox Drop, Fox Drop, okay. Um, so even if you're flying a Cessna, like just if you're talking to a control tower, I find that adds a lot of realism if you're actually talking to a control tower. So if you can do circuits at a controlled airport or flying in at a controlled airport, it adds a lot of a lot of immersion. Auto traffic, Delta Triple Two, uh, 2,500 feet per night. And yes, absolutely. The fact some controllers do definitely appreciate some diversity. Uh, Ninety percent of the traffic on the VATSIM network, 95% of the traffic is airliners flying from place to place. So when you do get a small Cessna, it's kind of fun because it's something that's a little bit unusual and not something you're not used to. Alright, so... We're almost there. First we have to cross 9 right. But what we can do is we can do seats for takeoff now. With my accent. Have a crew seat for takeoff, please. <laughs> that Travis enjoys so much. <laughs> and if it, if you ever find the self-loading cargo, just take up to a space on your screen too. It's really easy to get rid of. Just double click on the title bar and it just becomes collapses into itself, so it's really kinda nice like that. It does not take up much space at all. Alright, nine right. Chicago air traffic, Skywest two eleven Fox Truck, crossing runway nine right, taxiing for nine left. Correction taxi for nine center. Alright, clear on the right, clear on the left, clear to cross, the strobes are on. I'm pretty sure Fatsim has a Switzerland division as well. Alright, the strobe's off. And we'll say that we're cleared for takeoff, so we'll go ahead and get the fuel transfer manual. Alright, really quickly do the before takeoff checklist. So lights and strobes are to go. Fuel cross flow is manual. The flight attendants are advised. The transponder is on. Uh, radar and terrain are set and the cast is checked. And we had a APU in fight. Message there, which we'll probably have to wait till we get to the ground to get rid of. Alright. And we should have our strobes on. I'm trying to do everything in this airplane sometimes is more than a little bit uh, frustrating. two people at the same time trying to split the switches and steer the airplane onto the runway can be a little bit much sometimes. Chicago Air Traffic, Sky West, Tula, Foxtrot is rolling runway 9 center. Alright, stable. Koga. Check power. Okay, Japanese, and then one to the departing one of my nine left departure to the northwest. Alright. Flaps one. One thing I didn't do is then turn up to departure, which is something they like to do in Chicago. Flaps up. Let's just go ahead and go direct to our first fix. I got nothing else to do, so. Rainer, direct. Execute, and fill nav. Alright, and we're in the turn. And we might as well set 9,000. 
gonna be a real quick flight, guys. Altitude, so we have to speed. Didn't realize that it already switched to altitude capture there. If I could only look at one thing at a time, it really would help have an FO to set some things for you sometimes here. Alright. Chicago Air Traffic, Skywest 211 Foxtrot is uh, airborne off runway 9, center in the uh, left turn out northbound from Milwaukee. All right, so let's do this climb check really quickly here. So we get that off, and those two off, and then we say... Climb check, fuel cross flow is auto, bleeds and... Oh, traffic, 791, kilo vectors left to node, off of runaway, uh, nano left flow, bar runaway, go here. We're going to be departing uh, to the uh, climb northwest, check climbing up to 3,500 BFR. There's eight climbing nine, it's going to be a real quick flight up here. Not making a lot of money today, but uh, with, with only like two hours of credit, I think you'd get the min credit for the day here. I don't think this is capturing altitude, so I gotta get the power back already. I barely even time to think on this leg here. <laughs> Started your descent already, exactly. It's just, it's super quick when you're, in, when you're doing a flight like this. Alright, let's see if we can kind of get it to sit somewhere, a little bit below 250 anyways. Alright, and uh, let's just double check that uh, weather in Milwaukee here on my other screen. And, uh... Good morning ladies and gentlemen, just a short message six. from the cockpit to let you know we have in fact reached our cruise level. We're now level at 35,000 feet, we're not anticipating any delays, <laughs> so as we have to make the way around the aircraft, please make sure you keep the aisles clear of any items. And okay, so it needs a little bit of work. And enjoy the rest of the flight. They kind of picked the middle of the road altitude. I never noticed that the other time that I was listening to it. That. <laughs> Not 35,000 feet today. All right. Uh, we need really quickly... Uh, come through, please. Prepare the common for land. Thank you. Okay, just like that, we're already preparing for landing. So what we need is... I need Navigraph. That's what I need. I need Navigraph because I just need the ILS frequency more than anything else. Uh... Approach ILS one left, and let's do also the taxi chair while we're up here. All right, so the ILS to one left here. Uh, one ten three and zero one one is the inbound course. So one ten three. And three, we're still going too fast. Can't seem to slow this, speed, this thing down. And if I wasn't like also trying to program everything in, it would also be a little bit easier. But I'm also trying to program everything in at the same time. Heading mode, nav source to ILS. We need zero one one on the heading. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to land. Please make sure you are seated with your belt fastened and your trees in the upright position. Any right. items should be safely stored and remember to turn off all electronic devices until after landing. Oh, Thank you. Zero. Alright, so that's zero one one there. Alright. Uh, back to nav mode. The FO should set theirs on their side and I have to do it with the right nine center via Delta profiting on the right HC right. Alright, let's go. Alright, so we're back in nav mode, right? FMS, yep, yeah, we're in nav mode, good. All right, we're on our way. Uh, <laughs> certain rules you don't agree with. Yeah, this COVID period was a blur. Uh, yeah, if you're talking about the rule about requiring real names, yes, that did change um, on BadSim. So you do have to sign up with your real name, but when you're flying on the network, you don't have to reveal your real name. You can put down a pseudonym, uh, a nickname, 
or you can put down just your uh, ID number. Um, so yes, you can keep your personal, your name off the network if you want now, which is, uh, I personally, I don't necessarily agree with it. I understand why some people value their privacy, because I do value my privacy a lot. But one thing about putting your name on things is that it requires people to then be a little bit more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, responsible. The, the trouble with so much of the internet is that people hide behind pseudonyms so much of the time to say whatever they want. Um, Batsim is policed to a certain degree, which, which makes it a little bit less uh, prone to that sort of thing, but one thing that I always liked about it was that you did know people's names. You could you could find out who the people you were flying next to were, uh, and I always thought that, that kind of inspired people to sort of be a little bit more, perhaps, um, respectful of other people. It doesn't always work that way, but I, I, I think that contributed anyways. Anyways, um, let's get this briefing out of the way because we're getting there really quick here. Um, so we will say that we have checked the landing distances and set the landing speeds. Uh, and uh, let's see, today we're doing the ILS to runway 1 left here in Milwaukee. It's plate 11 1 and effective on the 7th of September, of, sorry, 13th of September of 2018. So low frequency 1103011, the inbound course. So we got 1103, and I did set 011 on both sides. Glide slope at Cutmo is 2600. Most 2600 ILS refer to minimums. Uh, that's what I didn't do. I didn't actually set the ILS DA. It's VMC anyway, so it's not a big deal. But 904. Uh, so I should set. I'm not going to be able to do this with an aircraft chart there, so let's just get that out of the way for a second. 904, so let's set 910. Come on, we winding it up, winding it up. 910. Um, yeah, and I'm going to start down here in a moment anyways. Uh, let me just finish this briefing really quickly and then we'll start a descent. Uh, Alright, so uh, a touchdown zone is at 7, of course. We got 740 anyways for the airport elevation. 2900 feet to the sector, altitude all sectors around Badger, which is off to the northwest a little bit. Missed approach is climbed 11, 1200 feet. Then climbing left turn to 2900 direct Badger. So straight ahead to 1200. And then left climb and turn direct back to 2900. And hold, DME radars required for procedure entry. VGSI has a path not coincident with the crossing height on the VGSI, 72 feet. Rills on one right, so just make sure we don't land on the wrong runway. Procedure not authorized for arrivals on the Badger VOR. Uh, ILS glide slope or low descent angle 3 degrees. Pappy's on the right, ALS of 2 lighting system. As I said, we've got 910 for our decision altitude. RVR 10 or a half miles. Beautiful day out there, that's not an issue. Landing on runway 1 left here in Milwaukee, we're going to make a convenient left turn off. The runway might be at the intersection or maybe down here towards Kilo, this kind of section here. And we're going to taxi right into the terminal there. Uh, I don't have any extra special scenery, but uh, we will taxi to a gate. Uh, let's see if we can find a SkyWest gate here really quickly. Just looking it up on the other screen here. Let's see what kind of flights we have from Chicago to Milwaukee and see what gates they go to types in random things. Alright, uh, so Sky West, let's see here. Uh, the last Sky West actually was last night. They went to gate Delta 54. So let's see if we can find Delta 54. Uh, Delta 54 is right here on this corner, so we'll aim for that. So that's what we're aiming for. Any questions? Uh, let's see, terrain is not much of an issue. Whether we really need to start descending already here. Oh, jeez. Okay, we're almost on top of the airport already. It'd be nice if we had an FO to help take over flying while we're doing other things here. Uh, so terrain is not much of an issue. Weather is... How are we going 280 knots again? Every time I bloody uh, <laughs> look away, it's doing 250 knots again. Doing 280 knots again. So we'll need a little bit of speed brake to help slow this baby down here. Alright, uh, and the airport's going to be coming up there very soon. So we gotta... Oh, that's the airport right there. And that's you, Squibbly. I see you on final there, so we're just going to try and turn here. And we're going to need a very quick descent to kind of get through this here. Apologies. Uh, all right, so terrain.
terrain, weather's not much of an issue, and operational, any NOTAMs affecting the arrival here. Let's just have a really quick look at this while we're self-vectoring here. Uh, I'm just looking at my other screen really quickly here. Alpha, da, 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 da. faded markings, faded markings. Signs, uh, Alpha 1, Alpha 4, Kilo Hotel, runway, I don't see one left mentioned on there at least, that's good. And I think we're going to actually have to just sort of give ourselves a little bit of a 360 here onto final, because that just crept up on us before I even knew what was going on here. It's just that fast of a flight here, so... I can see the glide slope, so we're just going to... We're just going to sort of set ourselves up on a little bit of a wide downwind here. Get flaps one going here. And we are pretty much perfectly on final, facing the wrong way. Quick little procedure turn and we're all set. <laughs> we'll double the percentage of GA traffic on the network. I like it. I like that attitude. <laughs> we need more GA traffic on the VATSIN network. That's always true. Okay, so we just need to sort of set ourselves up in a little bit of a procedure turn and loop back around. Because, wow, that was just such a fast flight. Didn't even have time to fully breathe it before we were already there. Should have come around for the other runway. Would have given me at least a little bit more time. Alright, let's get uh, the localizer up there, and we're just going to spin around and re intercept the localizer here. And off, we've lost some speed, we're good. A lot of things to do here. Alright, so flaps eight. That is a really lousy altitude capture. That is a really lousy altitude capture. I did not realize this looks so far below. Wow, this has been a horrible flight. I am so far behind the eight ball on this flight, it's not even funny. Alright. That's a little better. See, now I find, like, yeah, it does tend to be a very slow reactor, especially if it's kind of stuck in this mode of flight here now. Now an overshot by 200 feet. But at least it's captured the localizer. I see the runway out there. Okay, so we're all right. Milwaukee traffic. Sky was 211 Foxtrot. It's 10 mile final runway. One left. All right. Wow. Could really use an FO to do some of the jobs on this leg here. I think we got most of this going on. We never really got the scent check in there. We could do a descent check really quickly. Landing elevation is set to 740. The fuel is checked. We got 5300. TCAS is set. Uh, radar is uh, off. CAS is checked. Landing data is set. And the approach briefing is complete. Landing checklist is complete. All right, should be getting glide slope any second there. Here's the runway. Boy, <laughs> wow, that is just a busy, busy leg. And I'm not familiar with Milwaukee, so it doesn't help that I'm, I'm totally and completely unfamiliar with this airport. All right, waiting for glide slope capture. I find that this airplane, like, if it does sort of get a little bit out of trim, it takes a lot of effort for the autopilot to sort of get caught back up to the airplane here. So we overshot our altitude by a couple hundred feet. Now it's trying to capture it again. I've had that happen on one or two flights before in this airplane where it gets into just like this bad oscillation. All right. I think we're gonna be late, but that's okay. Expected in less than one minute, yeah, so. All right, there's glide slope. Go around altitude of 2,900 feet is set. Hopefully it can stabilize on the glide slope, but it does seem that you can do a fairly good job here. All right, let's go gear down. 
Flaps 20. And it automatically tells them to be seated for landing. Alright, and let's just set our VREF of 134, so we have the marker there. And we also need to arm the thrust reversers. Flap 30. Okay, I think we got it fairly stable here. Whew. Oh, yeah, I didn't even turn that on yet. <laughs> uh, streaming tools. How do I turn it on again? I always forget. There it is, Twitch bot. Turn him off. Turn him on. There. You'll have to make your prediction again now. He's listening. One thousand. Don't forget, Travis, it's got to be a negative number. Negative 110. All right, we are stable. Before landing checklist, I guess we should really do here. Before landing checklist, flight sensor advised, posture signs are on. Uh, flap, no, sorry. Thrust reversers are armed. Landing gears down and flaps are 45. Landing checklist is complete. Got a little fast there. Speed bleeding back a little bit. Seven or eight knots faster than we should be. Autopilot's coming out. Slide slope and correcting. Three hundred. Two hundred. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Alright, we'll take the next convenient left turn. That wasn't too bad. It was kind of a really lousy approach, but we sort of pulled it off into a nice landing there. Yeah. Whew. Just so fast, though. My brain is not used to working that fast. Uh, you know what? We'll go really short taxi in, then we'll turn around and do it again. 74% satisfied, not great, but anyways, I'm not too worried about that. Really, I'm worried about getting my pilot's life career done here. That's what I'm worried about. Please remain seated until the aircraft has come to a wow, that was, <laughs> that was a heck of a workout, though. Just, just trying to get that in. And one thing that I think I will do now, and I was contemplating it, is I'm going to do the... I may do the uh, leg back, I may brief the arrival before we even get going here, because when you've got legs that are 20 minutes, sometimes it's easier to just brief the approach before you have to take off, before you even leave the gate, just so that you're ready, so that it's out of the way, and then you can just focus on, on doing the approach. Alright, so flaps up, lights, and probes off, thrust reversers disarmed, and the APU start here. Hopefully it opens properly here. There it is. Open and start. Yeah, see it was kind of stuck in the start mode because the buttons. I pressed them out of sequence. So, uh, After landing check, the APU is starting. Transponder is staying on for the taxi in. Flaps are up. Uh, lights and strobes are set and probes are off. The after landing checklist is complete. Milwaukee traffic, Skywest 211 Foxtrot is clear. Front way, one left taxi to the terminal.
And I believe 59 was on the corner there. Let's just double check. I believe it was that one on the corner there. Uh, what did I say? No, 54. 54? Is that the one I said? Double check with the company. Yes, 54. So it is the one that's not sticking straight out from the corner, but is on the corner. So it is this one right here where it's got it's like a blue tug or something parked over there. Okay. Let's so go ahead and turn off the taxi light. And the APU is up and running. Perfect. Whew. I don't know about you, but I'm already exhausted. <laughs> Yeah, the little ones are some of the toughest ones in this business because they just, they're, they're done before you even realize what's happening. Uh, that is honestly probably one of the shortest flights I've ever done, certainly in the CRJ and, and almost in any airliner. And it's just incredibly short. And it is. When, it, when you've got a flight that's like under, that's like 20 minutes on the order of 20 minutes in the air, you need to be basically briefing it before you can depart, especially because we weren't even coming around the airport. We were on the straight in. I, I botched the descent and it approach because I had no planning time because I was still briefing. Ah. Somebody doesn't like me here. What's with this? Oh, delayed six minutes. Now my count is perfect every time. Alright, slot in right there. Alright, and the APU is available, so we shut down number two. Then we turn off the fuel pumps. We only have low pressure on the right side, good. We can shut off the other engine. Boom. Alright, we are here. We can go ahead and do beacon off, seatbelts off, and... Uh, what we can do is we can Come open the door. So, chocks in, door open. Stairs down. Cargo doors again, and let's see if we can get Pushback Express to work for us here. Call for the gate, and that will start the deporting process. So the door will open as soon as the gate is considered to be docked, and then it will dis disembark all the passengers and give me a report, and if their people are not particularly happy, probably because they didn't get any drinks or anything, but so be it. Alright, there they go, they're offloading, you can get some ambient noise. Ladies and gentlemen from the cockpit, once again, we apologize for the slight right. delay and can you do the destination, checklist. but you are now free to deboard and we uh, look forward to seeing you. parking brake is going to stay on, seatbelts are off, thrust levers are shut off, anti-ice is off, fuel pumps are off, beacon is off, nose wheel steering is, uh, oh, that's what I forgot, I forgot to turn off the nose wheel steering. Nose wheel steering is off, and transponder is going to stand by, and... Alright, the shutdown checklist is complete, and then we got to turn around and do it all over again. 